Hello and welcome to this video on goodness of fit versus parameter significance in structural equation modeling. My name is Christian Geiser, I'm an instructor and statistical consultant with Quantfish and on this channel I present weekly statistics tutorials. On Tuesdays I usually talk about an analysis in the m software and on Thursdays I address more general issues in multivariate statistical analysis including factor analysis, structural equation modeling, multi-level modeling and latent class analysis. If this is something that interests you then please subscribe to this channel. Also don't forget to hit the like button and to check out the description for additional free resources including a link to my weekly statistics newsletter as well as free courses that I offer through Quant. In this video, I want to address an issue that uh, frequently comes up when people analyze structural equation models and when they are new to structural equation modeling in particular. It is an issue that confuses many people when they find that a model that they fit to their data shows a good overall model fit. For example, they might get a favorable chi-square test of model fit and or other indices such as the RMSEA, CFI or SRMR might indicate that the model fits the data well or very well and then they move on to look at their parameter estimates, their structural regression coefficients, path coefficients and R-squared values and they find that maybe some or all of the coefficients in their structural model are not statistically significant and then people are often very surprised because they thought that a good overall model fit should go along with significant and maybe strong parameter estimates, effect sizes that are substantial or at least statistically significant and then they're very surprised when that's not the case and they think about whether there's something wrong with their model and whether maybe something went wrong and whether they can, whether or not they can use the model and so on. And so that's the issue that I want to address here in this video and I want to talk about um, why this is the case or why this can be the case and whether this is something bad and what you can or should do about it or whether at all you should do something about this. And so in order to understand this issue, it is important to realize that the global test of model fit addresses a different issue from the individual tests of the parameter estimates that are conducted for different parameter estimates or parameters in the structural equation model. The overall model fit test, the chi-square test of model fit, tests the null hypothesis that the covariance matrix in the population uh, and or the mean vector in the population if a mean structure is included is equal to the model implied covariance and mean structure. That is tested by the chi-square test of model fit whether the covariance structure that is observed whether that lines up with the model implied or model estimated covariance structure. And now a model can do a really good job of reproducing the covariances and means that were found among the observed variables, yet the effect sizes in the covariance matrix can be small. And in fact, there's actually an indirect relationship between the size of the covariances and or correlations in the observed data and the power that the goodness of fit test has to reject a wrong model. And so when a model uh, or when you have strong correlations in your data, strong covariances, when the variables are substantially related, then you have actually more power to reject a misspecified or incorrect model. And so a uh, situation where you have not so high relationships, not so strong associations between your variables actually facilitates in a way a uh, better fit, so there's less power, so say for the fit test to reject a model, and so you might um, end up seeing a model as fitting well when in fact maybe it's not such a great model. But that's so say a different story. The test of model fit does not directly test 
the significance of the associations of the your variables in the structural model or in the measurement model. That's a separate issue. So in other words, even though a model might fit the data well, meaning it reproduces the uh, observed structure well, it can still have low effect sizes. So there can still be covariances in the structural model that are weak and that lead to non-significant path coefficients. So that's not per se a sign that something went wrong with your estimation of the model when you find that the model fits well, but your hypothesized paths are non-significant. So that can happen and that could simply mean that your hypotheses were incorrect about these paths or that you perhaps had insufficient statistical power, maybe due to a small sample size or multicollinearity, meaning many correlated independent variables in your structure model or other factors. So it is not something that should shock you and that should totally surprise you. It's something that can absolutely happen. A model can fit well and yet the effect sizes may be small or zero or close to zero or statistically non-significant. So you might find that R-square values, for example, are much lower than you expected even for a well-fitting model. And when you have strong effects, as I mentioned earlier, strong correlations of your variables, then you are actually more likely to reject a model when it's not correctly specified. And by the way, it's also possible to find the opposite pattern. So you could find a model that is rejected according to the chi-square test of model fit that fits poorly, but has a lot of significant effects. So in your structural model, when you look at it, despite the fact that it doesn't uh, fit well and you look at your parameter estimates, you might find that there are a lot of significant effects in there and maybe even strong effects, large R-squared values. And so that can also happen. Now in that case though, I would say you should not interpret the parameter estimates or only with great caution because when your model is rejected according to the chi-square test, then the parameter estimates could be biased depending on how strongly misspecified your model is. So the first case is actually the better case, so say in a way, because when your model fits well and is not rejected according to the chi-square, you can interpret the parameter estimates if there's nothing else wrong with the model that you might see from other um, indicators. But so say the conclusion would be that the effects are simply not there, the, the hypothesized effects, but then you're at least in a position where you can interpret the parameter estimates because your model as a whole isn't rejected for the data. And then that's a result. That's a result that um, you have to think about why did these effects turn out to be so small, but it can be just as important to know that something is not related in the way that uh, one has thought. Um, as it can be important to find an effect. So the fact that you don't find the effects that were hypothesized doesn't mean you can't report the model or doesn't mean you shouldn't report the model. I mean, null findings can be just as important to know for the world. If there's sufficient power in principle, it can be just as important to know that things aren't related that were thought to be related. So in summary, Yes, this can happen. You can find a well-fitting model with non-significant structural paths, zero paths, and this does not mean that something went wrong. There's no direct relationship between the global test of model fit and the individual parameter significance tests. Those are separate. They address a separate issue. They look at whether individual parameters are significantly different from zero and parameters may or may not be zero for a well-fitting model. So those are two basically independent issues. So you don't have to worry in principle. You just have to then think about why did these effects not occur in the way that you hypothesized ahead of time, but you can still use the model if there's no other issues with, with it, if there are no other indications that something went wrong in the estimation of the model, you can still use such a model. You should report the findings and should tell people this is what we found. It's contrary to our hypotheses and here's some ideas why this 
may have happened. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, then please subscribe to this channel, hit the like button. Don't forget to check out the description for additional resources, including courses that I teach for Quantfish on structural equation modeling and factor analysis. And I'll see you next time.